Good day and hello. This is Group 6 from STEM to Abysibilities Reyes with the study entitled Water Absorption, Evaluation, and Characterization of Cellulose-Based Bioplastic Films from Rice Rhizotiva Husk Reinforced with Fiber from Coconut Cocos Lucifero Husk. To begin this presentation, I am Cedric Abel Domingo for the introduction and research objectives. Today, the demand for bioplastic continues to grow as the world shifts to more eco-friendly and sustainable materials in response to the global plastic waste problem. Bioplastics are made using organic and renewable materials such as starch, cellulose, and natural fibers. This makes it a more sustainable and eco-friendly alternative to petroleum-based plastics. According to Hayatun et al. 2020, rice has proven to be an effective material in making cellulose-based bioplastics. While in separate studies by Rolo and Odorizola 2018, coconut touch shows excellent results in fiber reinforcement of bioplastics. Since the Philippines is an agricultural country and has an abundant supply of such raw materials, it has great potential to be a producer in the bioplastic industry. While separate studies have proven the effectiveness of rice and cellulose in the production of bioplastics and coconut husk fiber in bioplastic reinforcement, this study focuses on producing a cellulose-based bioplastic film from rice husk reinforced with coconut husk fibers, and assess its physical characteristics and water absorption rate. Now, to better achieve the goals of the study, the researchers formulated the statement of the problem. Generally, this study aims to characterize and evaluate the water absorption rate of cellulose-based bioplastic films made from rice husk reinforced with coconut husk fiber. The research objectives are, first, are there any differences between the physical characteristics of bioplastic films with varied cellulose to fiber ratios in terms of its texture and color? Second, is there a significant difference in terms of the water absorption rate of the bioplastic films with different ratios of cellulose and fiber concentration? And lastly, which ratio of cellulose to fiber concentration concentration elicits the best physical characteristics and water absorption rate. Now for the research methodology, here is Erickson Miranda and Christine Dian Dian. Our research methodology flows first from the sample collection and preparation, next to bioplastic film production, then characterization evaluation of bioplastic films, and lastly, our statistical analysis. For our methodology, here is our sample collection and preparation. Rice husk was collected from Sambat rice mill, while coconut husk was collected from the locality in Candablayan, Batangas. The collected rice husk sample and coconut sample was washed with distilled water to clear them from impurities. Then the rice husk sample underwent sun drying for three days. On the other hand, the coconut sample was first cut into smaller pieces before sun drying for three days. Here is the process of our bioplastic film production. For the cellulose extraction from rice husk, 50 grams of rice husk was mixed with 300 ml 10% sodium hydroxide in a beaker. The mixture was left unattended for 24 hours. Then it was filtered using an aluminum strainer to remove the solid particles. For the fiber extraction from coconut husk, the 50 grams coconut husk underwent the same process as the cellulose extraction from rice husk. In our preparation of setups, Five setups with three replicates each were prepared. Each of these setups has a different cellulose to fiber ratio. For our first setup, setup A is the cellulose control group. 50 ml of distilled water was brought to a boil before slowly adding 5 grams of glycerol. Upon complete dissolving, a mixture of 20 ml liquid rice husk cellulose and 10 ml acetic acid was added and stirred continuously for 22 minutes until the mixture showed signs of thickening. Next, in setup B is the fiber control group consisting of 100% coconut husk fiber. 50 ml of distilled water was brought to a boil before slowly adding 5 grams of glycerol. Upon complete dissolving, a mixture of 20 ml liquid coconut husk fiber and 10 ml acetic acid was added and stirred continuously for 7 minutes until it also showed signs of thickening. Next, setup C has a ratio of 50% rice husk cellulose and 50% coconut husk fiber. 50 ml of the sealed water was brought to a boil before slowly adding 5 grams of glycerol. Upon complete dissolving, a mixture of 10 ml liquid rice husk cellulose with 5 ml acetic acid and 10 ml liquid coconut husk fiber with 5 ml acetic acid was added and stirred continuously for 10 minutes until it showed signs of thickening. Then for setup B, 25% rice husk cellulose and 75% coconut husk fiber was prepared. 50 ml of distilled water was brought to a boil before slowly adding 5 grams of glycerol. Upon complete dissolving, a mixture of 5 ml liquid rice husk cellulose with 2.5 ml acetic acid and 15 ml liquid coconut husk fiber with 7.5 ml acetic acid was added, 
and stirred continuously for 12 minutes until the mixture showed signs of thickening. Lastly, setup E consisted of 75% rice husk cellulose and 25% coconut husk fiber. 50 ml of distilled water was brought to a boil before slowly adding 5 grams of glycerol. Upon complete dissolving, a mixture of 15 ml liquid rice husk cellulose with 7.5 ml acetic acid and 5 ml liquid coconut husk fiber with 2.5 ml acetic acid was added and stirred continuously for 12 minutes until it showed signs of thickening. The 50 ml amount of distilled water, 5 grams of glycerol, and 10 ml total amount of acetic acid were kept constant for all setups. The mixture for each setup was then transferred to Fetri dishes. Three replicates were made for every setup with 2 mm thickness each and were sun dried for 24 hours. On table 1 is the different concentration of cellulose and fiber. The setup A, which is the cellulose control group, have the amount of 20 ml cellulose and zero amount of fiber. In setup B, which is the fiber control group, have 20 ml fiber and do not contain cellulose. The setup C contains 10 ml cellulose and 10 ml fiber. The setup D contains 5 ml of cellulose and 10 ml fiber. Lastly, setup E have 15 ml of cellulose and 5 ml of fiber. The characterization and evaluation of the bioplastic films. After sun drying for 24 hours, the bioplastic films were removed from the petri dishes for characterization. For the color and texture, the physical characteristics of a bioplastic are relevant factors that affect the quality perception of the produced bioplastic, according to Muhammad Azmin et al. of 2020. In this study, the researchers used sensory evaluation to identify the physical characteristics of a produced bioplastic through the smell and texture. For the water absorption, according to Singen and Chang of 2017, water absorption is critical in bioplastic films because this can have a major effect on the stability of the bioplastics, thus affecting their performance in final products. In this study, each bioplastic film weight was measured then soaked in 50 ml water inside a beaker for 5 minutes. Afterwards, the final weight or wet weight of the films was also measured. For the statistical analysis, one-way analysis of variance or ANOVA was also used to test if there is a significant difference between the water absorption of each setup. For the results and discussions, the bioplastic films produced with varied ratios of rice house cellulose and coconut nuts fiber underwent physical characterization in terms of color and texture, and yielded the following results as shown in Table 2. Setup A with a cellulose to fiber ratio of 100 to 0 appeared yellowish with a moist texture. Setup B with 0 to 100 ratio was wet with a dark brown color. Setup C with 50-50 cellulose to fiber ratio appeared as light brown with a dry and brittle texture. Setup D with 25 to 75 ratio turned out as grayish brown with white spots, with the same dry and brittle texture as setup C. For setup E with a 75 to 25 ratio, yellowish brown color was observed with a slightly moist and soft texture. And next, here we have table 3 for the steering time for each concentration. Setup A with pure cellulose was stirred continuously for 22 minutes. Setup B with pure fiber concentration was stirred for 7 minutes. 10 minutes for setup C which had a 50-50 cellulose to fiber ratio, 12 minutes for setup D with 25 to 75 ratio, and for setup E, 15 minutes were spent steering for the 75-25 concentration. Then we have table 4 showing the massing grams of 3 separate samples for each setup before and after soaking for the water absorption test. Setup A and setup B both recorded an average change in mass of 0.4 grams. Setup C had an average change in mass of 0.5 grams, while Setup D recorded 0.4 grams, the same as Setup A and Setup C. Lastly, we have Setup E, which had an average change in mass of 0.6 grams. For the detailed results of the water absorption test, here is the Nissan Gomez. After the physical characterization, the bioplastic films also underwent water absorption analysis. The data that was used in computing the water absorption rate are the average of the before and after weights of the films. Then, the formula weight after minus weight before divided by the weight after times 100 was used. The resulting rate of water absorption are shown in table number 5. Setting aside the two control groups, 
The highest water absorption was recorded by Setup C which contains a ratio of 50 is to 50 cellulose to fiber at 17%. On the contrary, Setup E with 75% cellulose and 25% fiber had the lowest water absorption. It is also noticeable that the water absorption rate decreases from Setup A at 20% to 12% in Setup E except for Setup C. With this, we can say that setups E and B, which have 75 is to 25 and 0 is to 100 cellulose to fiber ratio respectively, are the most preferable ratios. This is because lesser water absorption means that the bioplastic films are less sensitive to water. Thus, they can maintain their mechanical strength, which will then affect the future products. Contrastingly, Setups A and C which recorded the highest water absorption rate are the least preferable ratio as the mechanical properties of the bioplastic films could decrease once they come in contact with water. Meanwhile, one-way analysis of variance or one-way ANOVA is done to know if the null hypothesis must either be accepted or rejected. After running the statistical test, Result shows that the computed p-value 0.007 is less than the level of significance 0.05. This means that the null hypothesis must be rejected. Therefore, there is a significant difference in the water absorption of cellulose-based bioplastic made from rice husk reinforced with fiber from coconut husk at varied ratios. Now to give the conclusions and recommendations of our study, here is Sean Montañez. The use of cellulose from rice husk reinforced with coconut husk fiber in different ratio for the production of bioplastic film was investigated in this study. To be specific, the study aims to know if there are any differences on the characteristics of the bioplastic films from different ratios. The physical characterization that was done using sensory evaluation showed that there is difference in the characteristics of the bioplastic films. Moreover, the water absorption evaluation that was done showed that there is a significant difference between the rate of water absorption of each setup. Therefore, the ratio of cellulose to fiber that is best to use for bioplastics is 75 to 25, with cellulose having the larger amount. After conducting this study, the researchers have come up with the following recommendation. Number 1. Use a dry oven for drying the produced bioplastic. The researchers have no dry oven which is the most suitable way for removing the moisture. Number 2. Try using pulverized cellulose and fiber. And number 3. Use a stronger acid. The researchers use acetic acid which is weak acid. The researcher recommended using a stronger one because it results to better hydrolysis yield. Number 4. Increase the number of tests done on the bioplastic. The researchers was only able to conduct two tests, so they recommend to increase it for more real, reliable results. Number five, conduct a biodegradability evaluation. The researchers lack enough time to conduct biodegradability evaluation, so they highly recommend this for more significant results. And that ends this presentation. Again, we are group six. Goodbye and thank you.